In this video, we're going to illustrate how we can build a simple fly swatting game using coding with Chrome and JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to want to do is try to set up for some animation. Now, it's easy to draw static images, images that don't move in coding with Chrome, but it's actually not very hard to draw images that are going to move either. So we can do this actually pretty easily. We're just going to go ahead and create a function called loop. And what the loop function is going to do is it's just going to run forever. We're going to have it call itself over and over again. So we're going to, but we don't want it to happen really fast or else we won't be able to see the results of our animation. We want it to happen slowly. So we're going to use a function called set timeout and we're going to tell it to call loop again in 100 milliseconds. So now what's going to happen, you know, if we were to just put something simple in here like console.log hello, what we would see is as soon as we call this function, we're going to get hello about every 10 or 100 milliseconds, about 10 times a second. So that's not terribly interesting, but we are going to need to call that. So we'll go ahead and leave that in. What we want to do, though, instead of logging, just logging nothing or hello forever and ever, uh, we actually want to draw something. So we're going to go ahead and draw a stage. We want to try to draw a stage so that we can identify where our game is going to occur. So I'm going to draw rectangle. I'm going to draw my rectangle starting at uh, x coordinate of 5, y coordinate of 5. I'm going to make it 520 pixels wide. I'm going to make it 520 pixels tall. I'm going to make it white. And you can give it a border. You know, we'll say, uh, let's give it a purple border here. So now we have a big rectangle just identifying where we're going to stay. So it's a pretty good start. It's animated even though it's not actually doing anything. It is redrawing over and over and over again. But if we're actually making a character that we want to animate, we're going to go ahead and create a variable up at the top. We're going to build this as an object. We're going to call this fly. We're going to create an object here. Right now fly is not a very interesting object. There's no properties. There's no methods. But we're going to introduce a few properties and methods. I'm going to give it an x coordinate and a y coordinate. And uh, I'm also going to go ahead and give it a draw function. So now my draw function can actually draw this fly. So if we want to make it really simple, let's just use a circle to represent our fly for now. So we'll draw a circle uh, this dot x, this dot y. We'll make this fly about 9 pixels wide, and we will make it black. Now if we, inside of our loop, we use fly draw. We should see our fly there. Not terribly interesting because our fly hasn't done anything. So we're going to want to want that fly to advance as well. I'm going to go ahead and create an, an advance function. And what this advance function is going to do is it's going to make the fly move around. So we could make the fly move just crazy right now just by saying this dot x plus equals math dot random times say 5 this dot y plus equals math dot random times 5. Now if we call fly dot advance within our loop we'll see the fly kind of move around but fly is just going to keep moving to the bottom of the screen. We'll notice something really really soon. One is that the fly is going to just move right out of our stage and since we're not redrawing that rectangle over top our fly is going to continue to move down so that's not really great. So one of the things that we should do here is we should make sure that our fly never goes off of the screen. And we can actually do that by setting this.x equal to math.min. We want the minimum of this.x in say 500 to keep that fly on the screen and we do the same with, with this.y. So now what's going to happen is our fly is going to move down to the screen and just stay there, which also isn't very interesting. We probably want the fly to do something a little bit more exciting than that. So we're actually going to make this a little bit more complicated. We're going to introduce uh, a, a change that the fly can have. So we'll go ahead and create a variable called dx. We'll say that's 5, and we'll create a variable called dy, and we'll say that's 5 as well. And what we're going to use dx and dy for is how, uh, how much we're going to have this fly change on every advance. So uh, we can have, you know, we'll go ahead and introduce some randomness again, uh, but this time we're going to do it a little bit more smart. We're going to say var r is equal to math.random, so that's going to be a random number for us. And uh, we're going to say if uh, r is less than 
0 0.05 so about 5% of the time we're going to change this dot dy to 5 else if r is less than 0 0.1 so also about 5% of the time we'll say dy is negative 5 and then we'll do again 5% of the time again 0 0.15 this dot dx is equal to 5 and then 5% of the time we will then do this dot dx is equal to negative 5 and what's going to happen now is 5% of the time we're going to change y so that the fly is going to move downward 5% we're going to change it so the fly moves upward 5% of the time we're going to change it so the fly moves to the right and then the other 5% we're going to make it move to the left now that leaves 80% which just means the fly is going to continue on its path which is going to kind of give it a natural buzzing kind of look so we no need to do more than that we need to say this dot x is e plus equal this dot dx this dot y plus equal this dot dy and now you can see that fly is going to move around a bit but we're still going to have a problem so now we're adding dx to the, the x and we're adding dy to y but you can see here the fly's actually gone above the, the area where we want to keep it so we can actually fix that just by saying this dot x is equal to math dot max this dot x and we'll say uh, we'll keep him inside here so we'll use say 30 we want to keep him well within the bounds so now our fly will never go outside of this box the fly will stay within the box because these four statements basically say if it's greater than x if x is greater than 500 we're not going to move any further to the right if uh, y is greater than 500 we're not going to move any further down and the same with the top and the bottom we're just going to kind of keep this fly within the within this area now this is interesting but it would be a lot better if the fly was a little bit more dynamic if the fly could do different things right now it's just a little black dot so let's go ahead and introduce a variable called state and we're going to set state equal to zero so state is going to be used so that we can create a few different frames of animation so in our draw function right now we're just drawing the the fly as a circle but we're going to go ahead and, and have the state update in our advanced function and have a couple of different ways to draw the fly so we'll say if this dot state is equal to zero we're gonna draw maybe some circular wings beside the fly so we'll use draw circle this dot x plus 10 this dot y 10 a white so filled circle with a black border and then we'll do the same thing on the right or on the left draw circle this dot x minus 10 this dot y circle is 10 pixels wide white black so now our fly kind of has wings but if we're gonna have these states we might as well have other states so let's go ahead and advance the states if we'll say if this dot state is greater than or equal to zero this dot state plus plus now now our states moving well beyond where we want to go so we're gonna actually add a couple more uh, more states we're gonna say else if this dot state equals one we're going to maybe we'll draw some ovals now so draw ellipse we'll say this dot x minus 15 this dot y 15 15 uh, pixels wide for that ellipse seven pixels high and again we'll make it white and black we'll do the same thing we'll go ahead and just copy and paste that line so we can do plus 15 this time now we, you'll see whenever we refresh we get two frames where we have a circle and we have the uh, ovals but the fly never does anything else which isn't really great so we're going to actually say if this dot state is greater than one this dot state equals zero now you can see there's a little bit of movement on these wings we could actually probably add a third frame to this fly so that it looks even more interesting so I'm gonna say else if this dot state is equal to 2 we will draw maybe just some simple lines to kind of show that the wings are maybe uh, in a way that they just look flat so we'll draw a line from this dot x to this dot y 
or starting from this dot x and this dot y. We'll draw that to this dot x plus 21, this dot y. And we'll draw another one where we draw on the other side here. And let's go ahead and change this now. So now that we have 0, 1, and 2, we'll go ahead and change this to 2. Now we have a fly that's kind of beating its wings a little bit there, but we could actually make those ovals occur uh, on the first, you know, this, the we start with the circles, then we'll have ovals, then lines. We could actually do something like, we'll say, or this dot state equals 3. Now we'll change this down here to 3. Now this is just going to cycle between the first frame, which is circles, the second frame, which is going to be the ovals, and then the third frame, which is going to be lines. So we're going to do circle, oval, line, oval, circle, oval, line, oval, circle, over and over and over again. And if we slow this down, let's say we cause this to only update every one second, you'll see we have this nice slow animation but you can see that we're actually modifying each iteration of the fly each time this runs we are causing the circles ovals and flat lines so let's go ahead and make that a little bit faster so now we have a fly that's going to stay within our area within our field here we've got a fly that's moving all around uh, but we don't actually have a fly we can smash yet so if we want to be able to smash the fly by a click we need to tell uh, our our document or our area over here to uh, to handle clicks so we can do that pretty easily we can actually just say on click is equal to function evt now we can handle clicks and just so that we can see that we can do that we'll just log in the event uh, click at evt.x plus plus evt.y so now if we click we'll see exactly where we're clicking if we click way up here in the top left we'll get a low number way down here in the bottom right we'll get higher numbers so we know we can click on this and let's actually have the fly handle our clicks let's have the fly kind of respond to a click here so we'll go ahead and add a function we'll say click this function and we'll pass in an x and a y coordinate so in our function what we want to check is do we actually click somewhere around the fly so let's go ahead and make sure that we're handling this fly click evt.x evt.y and here we're going to actually check to make sure that the click was somewhere within there so first we'll check the x we'll say if this dot x or I'm sorry if x is less than this dot x plus 10 and x is greater than this dot x minus 10 so what we're saying is if our click is somewhere between 10 pixels to the right of or 10 pixels to the left of our circle then we we'll actually will check to make sure that we're in the right you know the right uh, north south right up and down coordinates as well the right y coordinate so we'll say and we'll do this the same way if y is less than this dot y plus 10 and y is greater than this dot y minus 10 we'll actually handle the click so to handle the click you know we actually don't have a state for the click but we'll go ahead and just say state is negative 1 Negative 1 usually means something is bad, and if the fly's state is negative 1, it probably means something bad has happened to it. Uh, we'll actually now say in state negative 1, we'll just, you know, we'll draw this as a red dot. So now we have state 0, 1, 2. We'll go ahead and say else if this dot state equals negative 1, this dot, I'm sorry, draw dot circle this dot x this dot y we'll go ahead and make it a bigger circle and we'll make it a red circle so now if I can manage to click on the fly there we go so it's smashed but you can see it's still moving around and that's because when we actually click on it we're not changing dx and dy as well as the fact that we're still modifying them here in our advance so let's go ahead and change that we'll say this dot dx is equal to zero this dot dy is equal to zero and we'll also check to make sure if state is greater than greater than or equal to zero 
let's go ahead and change all of this and we'll just move all of this we'll select all this we'll hit tab or you can also use command or command or control uh, plus your bracket key there now if our state is negative one we're actually never going to enter this so when we click on our little bug here if I can manage to get him there we go he's just gonna stop there and he's just gonna be stuck He's just gonna be there until we refresh so using you know just about 60 to 70 lines of JavaScript code you can build a really simple game where you can interact with the screen and you can animate uh, a nice little sprite that's going to draw or going to dance around your screen kinda like a fly would now you can do a couple of additional things you know if you want to make the game a little easier you could change this to say 20 so that when you are trying to click on your fly you get a little bit more leeway on how close you have to be to it you know, so that's one way you can make this a little easier. If you want to make this harder, you could actually reduce the size of the area that you can click in, which is going to make it a lot harder to click on that fly. You know, so you can make it harder to kind of get to the center. Another thing that you can do to make it harder is uh, you can make the loop faster or slower. So you could say, "We're going to make this move really slowly, and that will make it easier." or we can say we're going to make this move a lot faster now you can see that fly is going to be really hard to hit because it's kind of moving really quickly you know instead of doing that you know you might make it a little bit more of a regional uh, refresh here might make it a little bit more of a delay between frames but uh, you might actually cre increase the amount that the fly moves so you know if you increase this say to 15 instead of 5 now the fly is really going to move fast the fly is going to just move all over the screen so lots of different ways you can modify this. Uh, it's always a great idea when you're coding to try to experiment and see if you can learn how your code or how when you change your code it changes your actual program. So it's a great way to practice your coding. Thanks for watching today and uh, don't forget to practice your coding.